When it comes to spectacular roller coasters, Japan has plenty to go around. But while there are many great rides to choose from, only a few are truly unique attractions. From screen-powered launches to built-in video games, these rides have caught the attention of enthusiasts all over the world. So as voted on by the viewers, here are the top 10 craziest Japanese roller coasters to ever operate. Number 10, Slope Shooter at the Higashiyama Zoo. This is by far one of the most unusual roller coasters on Earth. Located at the Higashiyama Zoo and Botanical Garden, this is one of Japan's oldest roller coasters, dating all the way back to 1961. After ascending an initial chain lift, riders are sent down the side of a hill, with several switchback turns. Unlike most coasters still operating, this one is officially classified as a side friction coaster. While the sides of the track are steel, certain sections of the bottom are actually made from concrete. As such, much of the track resembles a roadway, and one can't help but compare it to San Francisco's famous Lombard Street with its winding downhill turns. In addition, its colorful and quirky ride vehicles make it look like something straight out of a Dr. Seuss book. It may not be nearly as intense as Japan's other coasters, but its one-of-a-kind experience makes it more than worth your time. Number 9. Adventure Drive at Suzuka Circuit Motopia You wouldn't normally expect a family coaster to have a launch, but one coaster at Suzuka Circuit Motopia is sure to defy such expectations. Located across the street from Honda's World world-famous Suzuka Circuit racetrack is Motopia. This family theme park is geared for young children and features all sorts of vehicle-themed attractions like go-karts, junior motorbikes, and a launch coaster named Adventure Drive. On this coaster, passengers board Jeep-like ride vehicles and are set on an off-road adventure through a mystical forest. While it seems like an ordinary family coaster on the surface, this ride has a unique, one-of-a-kind launch system you won't find anywhere else. Approaching what's referred to as a power ring in the ride's storyline, riders are instructed to shout power to launch forwards as loud as they can. The ride's cable launch system is hooked up to a recording device. The louder riders shout, the faster the launch is. Of course, the vehicles will still launch without shouting, but if you want to hit that desired top speed, you'll have to scream as loud as you can. It is the world's only noise-powered launch, and it's a wonder why we don't see more of these. It's a charming concept, and it's bound to appeal to young enthusiasts looking to ride their first launch coaster. Number Number 8. Geki on Live at Tokyo Joyopolis Forget virtual reality, this coaster is a flat-out interactive video game experience. Located at Indoor Amusement Park and Arcade Tokyo Joyopolis, this is perhaps the most sought-after indoor spinning coaster on Earth. Originally opening as Veil of Dark, this coaster was once a shooting dark ride with controllers mounted to the restraints. Besides this feature though, this ride was an extremely revolutionary spinning coaster experience when it first opened. Not only was it the first launch spinning coaster, but it was also the first to feature an inversion, an inline twist to be exact. In 2016, the coaster's shooting dark ride feature was replaced with an all-new rhythm game. The current ride experience goes as followed. Riders are given three buttons on their over-the-shoulder restraints. At the ride start, the vehicles stop by screens displaying the game. The goal of the game is to press the right button at the right time to the rhythm of the music, much like Guitar Hero and Parappa the Rapper. The music itself is always changing to keep the ride fresh, and the ride has been themed to several Japanese media franchises like Evangelion and Hatsune Miku. After a few rounds of this game, the vehicles go through a tire launch, sending them through winding turns and its signature inline twist. At the end of the ride, each passenger is graded on their score, allowing for some friendly competition. And since the ride is indoors, you don't have to worry about rain shutting it down. Number 7. Diving Coaster Vanish at Yokohama Cosmo World You may recognize this coaster from several clickbait video thumbnails. Thumbnails. Though the claims of it being dangerous or deadly are undoubtedly false, the coaster itself is real, and it has one of the most inventive and revolutionary coaster tunnels on Earth. This pink coaster starts off with two small drops before the ride's main feature. This larger drop takes riders into a world-famous underwater tunnel. Although riders will stay completely dry, the water jets at the start of the tunnel give the illusion that the train is actually diving underwater. It's a photogenic, creative, and aesthetically satisfying satisfying ride element that makes the coaster arguably more fun to watch than it is to ride. After the tunnel is a forceful double helix with the layout ending shortly afterwards. So 
So while it's a pretty short ride, its tunnel alone makes it a standout attraction. And its influence is clear to see by the upcoming Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland. Number 6. Ultra Twister at the Rusutsu Resort. Looking for a high intensity roller coaster that takes up as little space as possible? Say hello to the Togo Ultra Twister, a bizarre, compact attraction that surrounds passengers in a twisting, tubular pipeline of steel track. The one used to exist at Six Flags Great Adventure, these coasters are now exclusive to Japan, with only four still in operation. While Togo has a reputation for rough rides in the United States, the Ultra Twister is said to be glossy smooth. However, out of these four coasters, only one of them features a different layout. This one can be found at the Rusutsu Resort in northern Japan. This Ultra Twister is the only one ever to feature a dive loop. While other Ultra Twisters reverse the vehicle's direction halfway through the course, this ride twists passengers under the track before sending them back to the station still facing forwards. Of course, this dive loop is in addition to the ride's three Heartline rolls, giving it more inversions than any other Ultra Twister. It may not be that long, but this small coaster packs a strong and memorable punch. Number 5. Thunder Dolphin at Tokyo Dome City This Intamin Mega Coaster is in quite a crazy location. In fact, it's located right in the middle of the world's busiest city. Surrounded by a sea of glass and concrete, Thunder Dolphin stands at a staggering 262 feet above the ground. At this height, passengers are given truly astounding views of the city as they traverse the course at over 80 miles per hour. Not only do the trains soar past busy streets, streets and skyscrapers, but they even manage to go through a building in a massive centerless ferris wheel. The scenery and setting in general emphasize the ride's height, and even those not afraid of heights may be intimidated by the experience. Now you may notice that the track is surrounded by netting in some of the newer footage here, and no, this is not to catch passengers if they fall out. This netting was actually installed after an incident where a 9 year old guest was struck in the head by a 10 inch bolt that fell from the ride. The coaster was actually closed down for for over two years because of this, but has since operated without incident. If you want to check out the surreal, city-flying thrills of this attraction, Thunder Dolphin is a can't-miss ride. Number 4. Takabisha at Fujiku Highland Built by German manufacturer Gerslauer, Takabisha packs quite a few memorable elements into its relatively tight layout. This is a Eurofighter model that has both a 62 mile per hour launch and a vertical lift hill. It also manages to pack in seven inversions, including the world's only banana roll element. This twice inverting element in particular gets its name from its quirky banana shape from a certain angle, but by far the most notable thing about this coaster is its main drop. After the vertical lift, riders will undergo a 121 degree drop that folds passengers under the track as they gain in speed. The resulting experience combines the stomach lifting sensation of a drop with the out of your seat airtime as it crests over the sideways hill. For seven years, Takabisha has been thrilling guests with its unique layout. In fact, in fact, it's become so popular that a couple even celebrated their wedding on it. The park even fitted the coaster with white satin restraints. Now that's pretty cool. For those of you Americans who can't make the trip to Japan, you're in luck. Next year, a near exact clone of Takabisha will be opening at New Jersey's Nickelodeon Universe. This one is said to be even steeper than Takabisha, though reportedly only by half a degree. This is proof of how influential and popular Takabisha is, and don't be surprised if we see more coasters like it opening around the world. Number 3. Moonsault Scramble, also at FujiQ Highland. Though no longer in operation, this coaster will be forever remembered by how flat out insane it was. Despite its short shuttle coaster layout, Moonsault Scramble is famous for being one of the most intense roller coasters ever built. To put it in perspective, astronauts typically experience a g-force of 3 g's during a space shuttle takeoff. 3 g's is akin to 3 times the force of gravity. Moonsault Scramble on the other hand had a reported g-force of 6.2 G's. This made it one of only two roller coasters ever built to surpass the 6G mark, with the other one being the still operating Tower of Terror at South Africa's Gold Reef City. These forces were exerted at the bottom of Moonsault's Pretzel Knot, a first of its kind inversion that resembles a giant pretzel. Another notable thing about this coaster was its height. From a structural standpoint, it was the first coaster to be over 200 feet tall. Though since it is in a full circuit, many enthusiasts don't consider it to be the first hyper coaster ever made. That that honor still goes to Magnum XL 200 at Cedar Point. Moonsault Scramble was also the only roller coaster in history to have an ice skating rink around it. Unfortunately, after 17 years of operation, Moonsault
Moonsault Scramble was permanently closed and sent to the scrapyard in 2000. This was done to make room for the next coaster on this list. Number 2, Do Da Dompa, once again at Fuji Q Highland. Named after the sound of a traditional Japanese taiko drum, This was one of the first roller coasters designed by American manufacturer SNS Worldwide. Much like Moonsault Scramble, Do Da Dompa is said to be one of the most forceful roller coasters of all time. This is due to its extremely intense launch that takes riders from 0 to 112 miles per hour in less than 2 seconds. The experience has been compared by some enthusiasts to being rammed in the back by a semi truck, and believe it or not, this ride is even faster today than when it first opened. In 2017, park officials officials decided to spruce up the ride's layout by replacing its original top hat with an enormous vertical loop. This was reportedly done to make the ride more exciting since maintenance issues forced a trim brake to be installed on said top hat. In order for the trains to complete the loop, the ride speed was increased from 107 miles per hour to 112 miles per hour. This made the ride even more intense than it already was, and even some of the most seasoned coaster enthusiasts are legitimately terrified of it. It often ranks as one of the top bucket list coasters for hardcore enthusiasts, and with a launch this bonkers, how can it not be? Before we get to the number one spot, here are a few honorable mentions. First and most notable is Ija Nika at Fuji Q Highland, an SNS fourth dimension roller coaster. There's no denying this is one insane ride experience, though it isn't really unique to Japan. X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain is essentially the same model, and another SNS fourth dimension coaster exists at China's Dinosaur Park. And though it's an intense ride, it didn't have any notable elements that separated it from the other coasters on this list. Nevertheless, it's an ultra-intense 4th dimension ride experience that makes it absolutely worth noting. Next is the new Wild Mouse at Misaki Park. This strange Hopkins Wild Mouse takes guests on a slow, winding course with wonky-looking turns and tiny airtime hills. It certainly is strange, but it's not really unique enough to make the list. Finally is Jet Coaster at Rakutenshi. While it's currently a standard family coaster, it was something much more bizarre last year. In 2017, the park was briefly rethemed to a quote unquote spa amusement park. This three day event was done to celebrate the success of a viral promotional video where Jet Coaster's trains were literally turned into bubble baths. For three days, the coaster publicly operated with the trains filled with bubbles. The result was a comically strange ride experience. Though this was merely a temporary promotional stunt, it was an extremely memorable one. Number 1 Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. Built to celebrate the Year of the Dragon, this massive, intimidating beast of a ride is the only non-launched Giga Coaster outside of North America. For those of you who don't know, a Giga Coaster is classified as a full-circuit roller coaster over 300 feet tall but less than 400 feet. At the time of its opening, it was the tallest and fastest full-circuit roller coaster on Earth, with a top height of 318 feet and a top speed of 95 miles per hour. Though these records have since been surpassed, it still holds the record for the longest roller coaster on Earth with a total track length of over 8,000 feet long. While Giga Coasters are typically built by Swiss manufacturers Intamin and B&M, this ride was actually made by American manufacturer Morgan and is the only Giga Coaster they've ever built. In order to protect the coaster from Japan's earthquakes, much more steel was used on the ride's structure than other Morgan coasters, making the supports much thicker and sturdier. The need for more steel ballooned the coaster's cost to a whopping $52 million making it the most expensive non-Disney roller coaster of all time. As for the ride itself, the layout features a plethora of massive airtime hills and enormous bank turns. Though its original Morgan trains allegedly made this a rough ride, the coaster recently got new trains from B&M, making it significantly smoother and a lot more open feeling. It's a unique and memorable Giga Coaster experience and one you can't miss out on if you visit Japan. Before I wrap things up, I'd like to announce the results of the last weekly poll. Last time I asked, what is the best roller coaster made by Mock Rides? Well, the viewers have spoken, and the winner is DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. Second place went to Helix at Lisa Butter with 234 votes, and third went to Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City with 199 votes. So thank you very much for voting. And for this week's weekly poll, I'd like to ask, what is the best coaster in Germany? And if you haven't ridden any of them, which one most interests you? I have all of their extreme level thrill coasters listed, and if you feel like I forgot one, feel free to select the option to leave your own answer. I'll be counting those as well, so feel free to head on down to ThemeParkCrazy.com and cast your vote. 
Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.